Today we're going to go over a Judge Kavanaugh. Well, recently because he turned down, uh, I believe it was two cases, though, of uh, Planned Parenthood cases that went up to his court, but he turned them down. Well, you said he was, you said he's responsible. Right, right. Um, Kavanaugh, he had the opportunity, right? So it only takes four justices in the Supreme Court to decide that they're going, the whole court will hear the case. And uh, so normally you don't know how the vote turned out. They don't really disclose that. But in this case, Clarence Thomas responded to their non-response and uh, he indicated that he, Gorsuch, and um, Alito all had voted to, um, he, you know, so he created a response. And those three supported hearing the case. And you could uh, assume that they supported hearing it because they wanted to be able to affirm the state's right to um, deny funding for right. particular vendors um, as it relates to uh, <clears throat> Medicaid funding. Because Medicaid is, of course, funded by tax dollars. So... That was the issue there. And uh, Kavanaugh or Roberts could have voted to uh, hear the case, and they chose not to. Chose not to. And all this uh, fear-mongering that went on in the past couple of months saying that he's not that Roe versus Wade is going to be turned down. Uh, their access to abortions will be, you know, whether way, they'll go back to the time of coat hangers. Um, all this kind of circus media fabrication of things kind of going back in the past right. uh, that were going to happen. Uh, and here you have a moment, Kavanaugh, uh, what, no more than two months in already, yeah, uh, and not really hearing the case, right, to kind of make uh, their terror nightmares come through. True, you can say, right. Um, an interesting thing about Roe versus Wade, when I was kind of reading about it, looking at the history, there's never really women could get abortions before that. Uh, people could freely get them in uh, California, for example. So it wasn't like. You could not get abortions back then. You could. Some states did not allow for it, right? Like New York, it was difficult at the time to get it in New York. Or like in Texas, I think. But California, it was very easy to get an abortion. So it wasn't like uh, them saying, it's like <laughs> the attack on uh, Hobby Lobby when they're covering 14 of your um, prescriptions of like, to not get pregnant, right? Anti-abortion pregnancy. Um, but they won't cover the other two. All right, they're offering to you. It's accessible. It's available. They're not saying you can't have it, right? So here in the United States, in America, uh, there wasn't anything saying you can't get an abortion. Just, uh, certain places would not allow for it, right? right? There's nothing that could stop you from going to California to get one, for example, right? So it wasn't like this dire consequences of people dying in alleys uh, and, and troves right. over this. Um, so even if Roe versus Wade was overturned, it will just go back to the way it was. You states. Could, yeah, states, right. Right. <laughs> right. Right. And that's a big fear. Yeah, that's a big fear for a lot of people. They don't They don't like any the states being able to um, make those decisions, even if an overwhelming percentage of the population, you know, they claim to support democracy, right? But uh, uh, certain overwhelming percentages of West Virginia, anyway, completely oppose abortion right so right they they're not getting what they want local democracy <laughs> nah they want worldwide democracy right right communism right exactly yeah, yeah. And, and susan collins said she felt vindicated uh after having supported kavanaugh because well look at what he just did now he's right you know he said he wouldn't <clears throat> take this case and she firmly believed and she she an empowered woman who made a decision on, on her own was widely reviled and and hated by um, many other women in the feminist movement and what have you. So it's funny to see uh, that she did something and and feels you know like she was right about it. And um, she nonetheless, all of these people hated uh, hated her for a while. So it's, it's an interesting example, <laughs> right? So I mean, here was this moment to shine, you can say. Uh, as a conservative and the balance that they espouse and to you know, if you want to get an abortion do it on your own dime uh, not on uh, the teat of the taxpayer right. right and these are all taxpayer funded uh, in terms of like in terms of getting the funding for Medicaid and so from from there I would say uh, I want to look back at uh, the whole debacle that took place a couple months ago with Kavanaugh uh, we haven't had a moment to discuss this since the new show, but right. uh, that wasn't too long ago. That was so recent. 
and time uh, moves fast time moves fast right <laughs> in the current events <laughs> that's cycle. yesterday's news right <laughs> but this stuff is still kind of happens every once in a while you still come across um an article saying a uh, false accusation came you know came through uh teacher rape student that happens like every other month um but they don't they're not really as highlighted as cases in which the um the perpetrator is a male right Right. Uh, or highlighted in the past uh, decade or so, if, particularly if it's a white male. Uh, and so when that happens, so like the media kind of blows it up and goes all over the place with us. Uh, Kavanaugh is no exception with that. Uh, I think it just kind of highlights like their, the leftist desperation to kind of have any kind of control of power. And like their last card was to try, just accuse him. Um, people were saying rape, but, you know, for his testimony, it was groping. Right. I don't know how that got misconstrued because you see a lot of people and activists out there saying, oh, you raped her. It's like, no, it's groping. You know, once kind of like what um, Al Franken did, pretending to grope someone in a picture, right. military uh, personnel while she's asleep. Uh, he lost his uh, position, right? He got ousted out of Congress. He resigned or something like that, right? Yes. Yes. He was driven out of office and he became persona non grata. Right. Pretty quickly. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, and, 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 and rape. And, uh, to, of course, uh, not okay crimes in a Western society world, right? Right. And uh, one weighs heavy than the other when you want to weigh it. Um, but at the same time, uh, and this testimony is interesting because we'll find a lot of holes that happen in there. There's a lot of uh, witnesses against Ford's testimony. Uh, even th- today. Even today, yeah. After <laughs> they, all still this time. Can, they still come out, right? right. There's still uh, people who, uh, who testified or said that Kavanaugh did something to them, and they came out today recently just saying, ah, I made that up. Didn't really happen. Right? Like two, three uh, witnesses coming forth saying that they made it up. Right. And the it's unfortunate because, the you know, there's nothing worse, I mean, that violates the non-aggression principle or or individual liberty than than rape. And so this idea that, it, that the title, the word itself is being changed and kind of uh, undermined is horrible. Um because obviously every one of these people who lie about it hurts the ability of real victims to uh, get right. any kind of help and right. to be taken seriously. And to equate it on the same level, right, kind of robs them of uh, their story, you can say, of that experience. Right. Of, right. Um, so it's kind of funny because you find like the during the FBI investigations, in the very beginning, he passed them, right? It wasn't until this testimony came out of nowhere, right? this accusation that they allowed it to go. Why didn't they first put this accusation? Because this accusation by Ford was sitting on their table for a while, even during the FBI background investigation, when that passed through. So right. they didn't bring this out until the end. Uh, so I kind of I find kind of pause of uh, trouble there when you, when you kind of see that. Because uh, you'll find uh, FBI investigations will say that are a sham, right? Because he's guilty, the left will say. Mm-hmm. But when the FBI is investigating Hillary, you know, she's innocent, right? <laughs> See, the FBI exonerated her. She's perfectly fine now. She's perfectly fine, yeah. James Comey has appeared out of nowhere and, and decided that no reasonable prosecutor would ever take that case. Right. Right. So it's kind of funny how they have, when they want the FBI to work, they work for them. When they don't, they don't, right? Um, so you have um, from there other interesting uh, Democrat sex abuse predators. <laughs> You have a whole list. Then the left is uh, replete with them, right? So they kind of, it's, it's, they're going after like trying to find right wing people, but right. the left has a whole list, especially this part this year with Harvey Weinstein, right? Uh, in terms of allegations from Hollywood left. Right. Uh, you have uh, Kevin Spacey, which I was kind of surprised by that one. Yeah. Um, I like his movies. Right. I've yeah. always liked his movies. Yeah. It was sad to hear, but yeah, certainly it seems pretty impeach- unimpeachable. Right. What, you know, what he's done. I like how, um, well, I don't like it. It's clever in terms of strategy and the way that he would uh, respond to this allegation. He said that, you know, it's, uh, you know, this happened. I'm terribly sorry, but I think it's time for me to come out that uh, I'm gay. Right. Yeah. Hero. (laughs) Hero. What a courage. What courage. Right. (laughs) And then it turns out on the set of um, House of Cards that uh, he was uh, doing the same thing to many of the cast members there, people that work there, right? Hmm. Um, and that's how Netflix finally ousted him. I tried to watch the last uh, episode, last season. It's yeah. kind of weird. 
it, yeah. unwatchable. Yeah. The yeah. what made it so interesting the first season has gradually disappeared. Right. Unfortunately. All right. Here's something funny. A couple <laughs> years ago, I think maybe in 2009, I sent in like a a picture of myself what I my size to like a modeling agency, and uh, they sent me something and said, "Hey, we'd like for you to come in for a uh, for House of Cards." Uh, I'm thinking to myself, I'm not really interested in... Uh, then now you know, if you just played your cards right with Kevin Spacey, you would have gotten no, in like that. Oh. I thought it was about gambling or something like that. I thought it was like uh, that sort of stuff. I had no idea it was about supposed to be like this whole political theater thing, right? Mm. House of Cards. I'm thinking, you know, it's a show about playing cards. So I didn't take it too seriously. Because he was in 21 before, right? right? Well, yeah, they didn't even say Kevin Spacey in it. They just, they, oh. yeah, they were very uh, quiet about that. They say, there's a show about this that's going on, and uh, we're looking for people to come in for that. Uh, that would have been really funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is that is interesting. That show was so, uh, was so good at first. And um, yeah, it, and it was set in D.C., and so there was all of these visible, you know, things that you always see in D.C., and I was like, right. that's cool, and... And uh, it ended on a really interesting note in the first season, and then over time, yeah, it just got got a little tired. And without Kevin Spacey, obviously, right, <laughs> uh, lost a lot. I think he'll make his comeback a couple of years from now. Mm. He'll play a role of a villain. That's usually how this kind of goes. Kind of like uh, Mel Gibson he had this drunken tirade. Right, it was recorded, and he kind of blamed uh, everything on the Jews. <laughs> I think the, that came on the heel of him finishing the Passion of Christ, so he's kind of really into it. I, right. I imagine, right? He was into the moment, All right? Yeah, and you know, <laughs> the, the Jews uh, selected Christ to uh, now go free, right. right? Between him and uh, Barbarus or something like that. I don't know, right? But, yeah, and so uh, I don't know. So he's still, you know, people get into character and they're kind of stuck into it. He's a director; he's stuck into it. Uh, they say like Heath Ledger was stuck into it, and maybe it helped drive him to suicide. Hmm. Um, but, uh, but that kind of ruined, that kind of put a pause in his career for a long time. And it wasn't until I think it was, uh, the expendables where you have all the like eighties, uh, action figures coming out there, <laughs> Rambo, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, Bruce yeah. Willis, that he, I think it's the second or third one where the main bad guy villain is lethal weapon, Mel Gibson. <laughs> right. <laughs> I thought Daddy's Home 2 was a definite good. Uh, I don't know if you saw that one. No. But he plays uh, the dad of like Mark Wahlberg and he's a, oh, tough, right, he's right, a tough guy. Right. It, it was like good. It was just perfect for him. Right. <laughs> and, and and that's recent now. And before that was expendable. So I'm seeing that he has to play now more of the antagonist roles. Right. Right. To be accepted and to kind of into the movies these days. Right. right. Hopefully, yeah. Well, maybe Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey's on, supposedly, I read an article that he's on, he could be on an island somewhere, uh, the Canary Islands or something, or he could be in hiding. He hasn't been uh, really seen lately. And that's right. probably for the best. Um, you don't want to really can't come noise. back from that, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tyrates, angry bouts, drunken moments. You know, you have your uh, sure. Iron Man guy who's, who's a... Uh, yeah. Had all his uh, drunken bouts himself. It's history. It's interesting. People love it and eat that up. And like you know, their moment, like you know, when they're down. Even uh, Joaquin oh. Phoenix in that movie, uh, I Walk the Line. Uh, right. So, I don't know if you could come back from a sexual assault in this country. Maybe in the Middle East, right? Middle East is kind of weird and different in terms right. of Robert assault. Downey Jr. That's Robert right. Downey Jr. Yeah, yeah. Right. He, he's yeah. He's he's had horrible bouts and then yeah turned his life around kind of. So hopefully. Winona Ryder. Uh, herself uh, was a klepto kleptomaniac yeah and uh, came back and now she's in uh, Stranger Things right yeah that's true yeah as long as you're well yeah there there's certain you know sins that cannot be forgiven and I think to some extent Mel, even Mel Gibson is still struggling I mean because, right but um, yeah there's there's certainly for for these types of crimes I mean Harvey Weinstein will never be heard from again Matt Lauer these right. types of guys. Matt Lauer is also another uh, guy along those lines. You, you're Al Franken, you're Bill Clinton, and you're Anthony Weiner. Right. These these types of guys who uh, are supposed to be the most sympathetic feminist supporting. It always turns out figures. those are uh, the ones who perpetuate these things. Right. These male feminists. Right. I'm your ally. You can trust me. I'm a feminist too. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, Not until they aren't. I would say uh, uh, Bill Clinton. A big one. Uh, it was interesting. That was, I think, there was a debate between. There was a debate between Clinton and Trump. I think 
Trump brought in some of the people who accused Bill Clinton into the audience. <laughs> right. Did that happen? Yeah, I think Clinton, that happened, right? Clinton yeah. himself, Bill Clinton, was in the audience. He was in the, in, yeah. in the audience. <laughs> and, he's debating, and Trump is debating Hillary. And then, yeah, he brought in um, a couple of, of Cl Bill Clinton's victims. And wow. There's one yeah. picture of him looking over like, <laughs> like that. And uh, it's, it's pretty, yeah, he was a little bit worried for a moment there. Juanita, Juanita Broderick was right. one of the people. The left is replete with these kinds of people. Um, so it's kind of fun. Like, it's interesting. Like, those who kind of espouse, like, the most vehemently against, like, a certain vice or something like that turn out to be themselves a perpetrator or have some kind of fetish with that. Right. Um, and you find that sometimes with uh, people who say, like, uh, people who are gay or sinners, politicians, and it turns out they get caught having right. sex with a guy in their office or something like that. Right. right. There was a pastor from Atlanta, I remember a while back, who, yeah, said said the same thing. And and it's it, it is odd. You know, they choose to talk about something so often. And oh, what do you know? It turns out that's their that's, that's their thing, <laughs> that's their own issue. Yeah. <laughs> They're kind of projecting in a way, you know. Right. Uh, to make it seem like it's OK, not OK. Um, I mean, that's kind of what the left does a lot uh, from, from what I've seen so far. Right. And I think this. Uh, attack and just accusing you know with no evidence uh even at the last minute even after the fbi investigation uh was them at their most weakest moment uh was them at their most uh trying to play like the ultimate card accusing someone of rape right right especially here in a western society right especially here um in a christian dominated society where it's looked upon as uh the most like atrocious crime you commit right, right? Uh, next to like child uh, rape or abuse or something like that um, whereas you have other places like in the Middle East, um, yeah, it's not a big deal so much. Uh, right. there's Linda Sassor, for example, uh, who advocated, who was, who advocated for, for Ford, uh, who was very vehemently against Kavanaugh. And she was in DC for what a month this day after day is going out there. And so of course, under surreal law for Linda Sassor, right? Uh, here's what I, what I found. <laughs> Christine Ford's testimony would be worth only half of Brett Kavanaugh's, right? And she would need another woman and a man or three other women to testify as witnesses against him. And she didn't even have that either, right? And even some of the people who came out accusing later, not related, yeah. turned out to be false, right? <laughs> so I think people kind of sometimes forget, especially here, that we have it so good in terms of a lot of uh, our, our culture. Right. They forget about the bigger picture. And how horrible it is outside of this country, outside of this area, right? Outside of uh, the people here. If you were to go to the Middle East, Brett Kavanaugh would not need a, a calendar at, at all right, yeah. to, to defend himself. Right. Yeah, we have such a reliance on the law. And by the law, uh, you know, not necessarily the government, but just the expectation of justice and equal treatment. And somebody, you know, being injured or hurt is you know their testimony is considered valid especially when um you know they produce evidence and they uh they do you know they, they're able to corroborate and um they don't necessarily need to have three people who witness the thing happen right. which uh, you know probably never happens right so it is yeah it's a shame that uh there's parts of the world where that that isn't the expectation right i and these of course uh these ideas that we find, kind of find really common sense, like right now it's common sense, like, yeah, the sun's the center of the world, you know? <laughs> uh, but back then it was uh, viewed differently, right? Uh, these kind of different developments coming from Western countries that we take uh, for granted. Um, I think uh, a lot of people kind of misplace how serious it could be otherwise in other parts of the world. Uh, and that these advances in like common law, right? From Roman times, even right. coming, right? Uh, bringing here to today, right? That um due process is a thing uh if someone accuses of a crime there must be evidence right uh whereas you're innocent until proven guilty <laughs> right obviously there's places where that's not a thing mm -hmm. obviously there's places where even if you do accuse of someone uh in terms of uh, gender equality right it's not the same uh so i think uh not, not so much like who do you give thanks for i think i, I think uh if you have any privilege my privilege is being born in a western world society or uh yeah still here for yeah. that absolutely yeah i mean think you see people who come here and uh they 
you know, I had a friend from Venezuela who always said one of his favorite things about the United States was rule of law and the expectation that the police can't just go ahead and take um, what you have and and um, hit you up for money. You know, right. they pull you over and you give them some money and they go away. And that would never happen in the United States, he said. But that that happens all the time in in uh, you know Mexico and Venezuela and right. different parts of South America. So that was one example, and you know there's there's countless others. But yeah, the expectations that we have here are just different, you know. And I would say, <clears throat> in terms of that, it happens a lot in South America. Uh, I used to think that maybe it's like a way of them realizing that statism is you know bullshit right you, you can um you can just pay the judge you can mm -hmm. kind of just uh, buy your way out of uh, any kind of criminal accusations uh, and, and for the most part it's true right yeah. you can buy your way out of a ticket um but at least here in the united states i mean there are corrupt things happens all the time yeah war on drugs is a corrupt thing um you have uh the assets uh caesar that happens uh when the police kind of pulls you over and it's like asset forfeiture asset yeah. forfeiture yeah hey there's a thousand dollars sitting uh on your passenger seat for example well we're going to confiscate that and it's up to you to come to court and prove that it has nothing to do with drugs right uh so that stuff does happen but for the i don't know for the most part i don't know how you would weigh it but if you go to court in civil cases for example um the rule of law does apply right. you, there are many instances where you do find some justice um, of course, there's instances where you're robbed of it, but whether it's even if it's 50 percent where it's successful or not, uh, that's higher than anything else you'll find in uh, South America. Right. Yeah. As, yeah. As bad as it is here, you know, it's it, and we have our justifiable complaints. Right? right. But it's it's worse in other places. And, and so, you know, we don't really have an argument, I guess, against people who come from places that, you know, it's like, oh, it's just so terrible in um, Russia. You know, Putin can just have a somebody taken out or something and you're like yeah that that stinks because uh you know I, I don't think a lot of reporters in the united states really worry about that right <laughs> right <laughs> depending right. on how showing it, how they act towards the president too Putin right now is trying to control rap music in the country <laughs> uh he says he doesn't want to ban it because uh it'll lead more attention to them but they want to at least control and facilitate uh, the kind of rap music, if there were going to be some in Russia, and uh, allow that to come forth. On a completely, well, somewhat related note, there was a Russian military um, music video that was released a while back. Um, but it's it's weird, and uh, I don't know if uh, anybody ever has a chance to see it. But it's it's this like they're they're trying to recruit for the military, and it's this guy who's like jacked. And he's he's like doing this kind of weird rap in Russian. You can tell. So uh, it it maybe that could be related. That was like an early attempt <laughs> <laughs> to get rap hip hop Russian started. Rap. That would be interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which well, says it promotes uh, degeneracy, and so he doesn't like it for <laughs> towards culture decay of uh, the country. Um, but going back to Ford, who was recently uh, seen again in a video. Uh, Pretty much commemorating, giving up um, appreciation towards uh, some sports team, somebody uh, who kind of looks up to her, right? Uh, and so she has an interesting way of, I would say, uh, responding to this, which is far different from her testimony, because you saw her, her testimony, right? Yes. Right. Uh, Extensive. And, yes. Yeah. Did you see the part? So, like, her testimony is interesting because. Uh, if you like watch her and the way that she kind of talks and kind of tries to present herself, she kind of does like everything to try to make herself look innocent. Like she'll even like look small. So even like try to make herself like this really happened. Right. Uh, and so she knows the media is on her. She's been coached. <laughs> she right. has a lot of people training her and how to represent herself. And you'll find that during the testimony, she'll kind of, so kind of talk like this. Right. Right. Her neck will be down. Demuring, yes. right? Like, like she's uh, on defensive, right? Like, like um, she's still um, in trauma, PTSD, right? She calls like this, and like, like I'm a little girl, right? You know, her voice kind of squeak, you know, kind of really tiny, really small, really defenseless. Uh, you know, trying to get people's uh, appeal to her, right? Um, the funny thing is, when you see her again, right, on uh, YouTube recently. She kind of does like a 
an entire 180 on that. Hmm. Good evening. Wow. I'm you can hear her. To speak with you from afar about a woman I admire so much. Hmm. A woman who suffered abuse as a vulnerable teenage athlete. She's got and, the head up. Head up, right? Yeah, she's not doing that, right? Who found the courage to talk publicly to stop the abuse of others. Her courage inspired other survivors to end their silence, and we all know the result. Re all right, so you see that. Hmm. And then let me pull up uh, Ford, full testimony. And it could, you know, like the microphone too, you know, that who knows, right? If it's, if it's really short, but it doesn't seem like that was necessary. Yeah, that's an extendable. I met with her staff on July 18th and with her on July 20th, describing the assault and discussing my fears about coming forward. Later, we discussed the possibility of sending a letter. Right. Right. Yes. And it, it is interesting. And it it's the, uh, you know, it, it's like I'm on the verge of tears Crying. this entire time. Right. But you can think about, I mean, one, one of the major problems with this whole case, and I don't know if you've ever seen any of these Netflix specials where they talk about, for instance, the... How to make a murderer. Right, or... Um, this repressed memory idea, but um, it's not clear that this, the way that most people respond to trauma is the way that she's projecting it. Um, it seems like by the time you reach a certain age, you've had your therapy, you've gone through, you know, a lot of this, your, your response is not the same as it was when you were a little kid. And, right. you know, it's like he touched me and things she's like that. She's a psychologist too. Right. 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 So she would know, like, <clears throat> the ways to kind of heal yourself or get over trauma. And psychologists also see psychologists themselves, right? They have their own people they kind of go to. Right. Uh, and this happened when she was, like, a teenager, she claims. And she's, like, what, over 100. And so, like, you know, you can't really still act. I mean, yeah. he's still in the same room, sir. And he's talking about beer. I love beer. and uh, <laughs> I like beer. I, I drink <laughs> beer. Still who do. Who doesn't like beer? Uh, he, uh... I love his first case that he cracked open recently, Supreme Court uh, case of uh, Bud Light. <laughs> <laughs> I think the most um, bizarre aspect to all of this, regardless of whether you believe it or not, is the, the the notion that she saw him rising through the ranks of the judiciary, the judicial system, and waited until he was going to the Supreme Court when she finally decided that that was the uh, that was a bridge too far. Right. When um, that he took a lot of cases involving people who had been victimized prior to that. Right. Right. So if he's indeed somebody who lacks any sympathy toward victims of sexual assault, wouldn't wouldn't it be good to keep him from making any decisions involving those people? I mean, she's a firm believer that the, of the state. She should have gone to the cops. Right. She went to politicians instead. Right. Right. So that's how severe it was for her and her memories. You know, it's a political move, right? If you think this guy's a real criminal, he's possibly could be doing that to other people. You know, here's a way to prevent that, right? Go to the cops, go to law enforcement. She didn't even do that. Um, so yeah, I think I think uh, her motives are, I think, pretty clear that she, they were just kind of using her as another way to kind of forestall it. Everything they could forestall it for a long time, forever, maybe. Um, or find another way to kind of maybe, maybe there could be a secret weapon where you can kind of defeat any of your opponents just accuse them of rape right, right. or or virtually anything i mean yeah. that's how it works in their world right accusation in their world against the left they they, they all kind of go down even um uh you, you find i think a uh, rick and morty character or i guess uh one of the creators he didn't really go down he's like i guess he was trying to a woo a co-worker or something like that there's never any allegations of like groping or anything like that but he has to make a public apology which is kind of weird because in europe uh i think there was like a walmart that was trying to set up over there and wasn't really successful because they had like this company policy that said you don't date your co-workers uh but in europe that's how you find your wives hmm. right so in europe most of the culture there and the way that they find their partners is in that workplace experience because they're there all the time anyways right, right. um so that's kind of like they didn't do a good job in researching the cultural norms of that area. Yeah. Um, and so it didn't really work that well in Europe um, because that's that's how it worked for them. 
That's what people find their wives and husbands. Right. Um, right. And over here, so it wasn't so much like an accusation, like he, like uh, one of the creators of Rick and Morty did that. But you find uh, there's other TV show that I like watching sometimes. It's uh, Honest Trailers, uh, where this one guy who would do like some of these debates did do some harassing stuff like uh like really not not trying to woo like really weird and creepy stuff um and some of these people are leftists and they're kind of brought down immediately you know so like for them since it works for them efficiently maybe they thought it could work against republicans or people on the right just the accusation alone to kind of bring them down right the but, you'll know it when you see it type thing too you right know, sometimes it's it's there is a gray zone and it's like pornography or whatever. You'll know it when you see it. And sometimes somebody's behavior, they just won't quit, you know, and you can tell that's that's a that's too far. Right. They crossed a line. But the left don't believe in due process, right? So uh, I think it was good that the right, at least here, or libertarians, right, whoever, uh, not on the left, at least do believe in that and actually uh, stood firm with that and didn't back down. And then it's like, oh, well, Kevin, I mean, you could have gotten from other things. So the left for smart, they sort of got them on like the Patriot Act, right? It was right. the, uh, help, help write that up, right? There's other ways. So <laughs> they're trying to say, uh, it's funny when they believe in the Constitution when it's convenient. But here's a moment where uh, it goes against uh, the Fourth Amendment. Uh, they could have get him in and say like, you know, yeah, he's not uh, uh, eligible for this, for, for that. Um, so pick somebody else. But they went for a ch- cheap shot. Um because and some guess, of that, some of that had something to do with the fact that they would have really like to wait till after the election to take this nomination up, because right. then they perceived there might be a possibility that the Democrats would control the Senate. At which point, they would have just uh, done the right. same thing that the Republicans did to right. Obama's nominee. Uh, they were trying to do the same thing. I think under Obama, I think there was another uh, justice that died. And saying, well, you know, he's about to get out, but does he technically still have uh, the right to nominate one? Um, but they went into Trump's court. Uh, I think it's hilarious. All the workout Ginsburg books I've come across on some of these stores. Uh, there's like maybe one good leftist store here in Richmond. And there's like a Ginsburg uh, workout program, a book you can see her kind of doing her, you know, push ups and, you know, pulleys and rbg yeah <laughs> she's got her own nickname now she's got her own necklace uh so supposedly anytime she issues in the negative on an opinion or whatever whatever they call that uh she wears this particular necklace with her outfit and so now they're selling that online. no way it's the I cult of personality <laughs> people like are praying for her <laughs> to keep living on <laughs> isn't it weird that people feel the need to do that Right. You know, this person has so much power over their lives that they can't imagine uh, another person being replaced. Could not that just be an argument to kind of abolish it all, right? Right. Yeah. Go back to state rights. I mean, even state rights will come across the same argument inevitably. But here's one overpoweringly. Uh, you're, if you're so fearful of the kind of power they could have or the next person could have, well, is, that doesn't sound like a problem already to begin with. Right. Right. It, people don't realize it and they don't want to admit it. And it's difficult to say, oh, maybe, yeah, maybe that's just part of the problem in the first place. Right. You know? Yeah. Jensburg. Mm. I love the picture of her like, just falling asleep. Yes. <laughs> Dozing off. It, it is an odd, you know, on a completely separate note, the idea of becoming a justice and then doing that until you're 90 years old or 80 something. Right. It seems just a horrible torture to me, but unless they don't have to do that much work, I don't think they do. It's all all just dinner parties and cocktails. Um, (laughs) Like, what about like if they have dementia? You know, what about like psychological problems? Like, um, I've heard like even Reagan had some problems near the end of his term. Yeah, Um, might have affected some of his decisions. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I'll give her. I don't know. Maybe it's like a weekend of Bernie's with her. All the means coming out. I think it's great. (laughs) I'll give her another year. Oh. I, think we're, I think we're going to come across another fun episode of uh, the circus that's going to come out <laughs> of this. I hope so. Yeah. It is great no matter, you know, how you feel about the Supreme Court. It's like, it's just great content. You yeah. can just create a, a ton of great discussions about it. <laughs> so going back to Ford, uh, let's right. go across, uh, examine some of the stuff that uh, you can say. Uh Put holes in her testimony. Right. Right. You had her ex-boyfriend. 
right, of six years. So apparently, even her husband didn't even know anything about Kavanaugh, right? Uh, but her ex-boyfriend came out not long after she te- kind of testified, and she says, like, Ford never mentioned sexual assault, right? Ford never mentioned Kavanaugh. Ford <laughs> did not even mention that she was scared of confined spaces, that she was uh, not scared of flying, right? Because uh, she was saying that the reason why she couldn't go, I guess, to an earlier hearing is because, you know, uh, her fear of flights. But, you know, you find that she's been going on these vacations. An too. obvious lie. Uh, yeah, going to Hawaii. You know, like, come on, there's <laughs> if you're online on the Internet, there's going to be a trail already of the things you kind of do. Right. <laughs> so I don't even know how she couldn't even hide that. And that that but nonetheless, that's a lie. And in court, that will start to impeach your character. Right. You lie about little things. Maybe you lie about larger things, too. All right. Who testified first, her or Kavanaugh? I believe she testified. She, testified she, first. she definitely testified first. And then he came in guns blazing. All right. This is a sham. All right. Yeah. Uh, he said that Ford knew how to beat polygraphs. I think she was already giving people lessons on how to beat polygraphs, for example. All right. Um, and of course, this is the best part. He says that Ford cheated on him and their relationship. And committed fraud. And the fraud part was, I think months after the relationship was over, he found like, like they share some, you know, six years in a relationship, you share some credit cards. And he's like, he found like a charge on like one of his credit cards. Like, this is weird. And like, seeing like he knew like it belonged to her and I confronted her about it. And he's like, oh no, it wasn't me. And then like, he found evidence like that was her. And it's like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. And <laughs> it was her in the entire time. Mm. So see, has a history of fraudulent behavior. I kind of like to look at um, of that, you know, when people say uh, such and such in person uh, or like Ro- Roseanne Barr, you know, like she made this tweet. She was thinking uh, she was Muslim or whatever. She, she didn't even mean to, for it to be uh, people perceived as racist. She wasn't even thinking about that at all. She was right. trying to be making a mean joke about someone. Right. Uh, people. Well, she's a racist. And I was like, well, let's examine her history. Does she have a history of being a racist? Look, look at a pattern of behaviors. Right. And if she doesn't, then this is like another leftist trouble in which now has turned out to kind of bring a downfall to the um, uh, to the show. It's trying right. to start off without her. Right. And the, yeah, the show was destroyed because it lost a, a bunch of viewers and it right. lost, uh, you know, obviously because she was the main draw. Right. What was the name of her family? Do you remember? The Bar. The Bar. Or, the bar. Oh, Roseanne Bar. Roseanne but, Bar. Uh, oh, shoot. Yeah. It, but the new show, right. The new show, yeah, after. without her. Yeah, tanked. It was interesting in the first episode, but viewer dropped after that. I would have loved to have seen a, um, maybe, a um, Al Bundy married with children. Oh, yeah. Roseanne Connor, the Connors. The Connors. There we go. Yeah. The Connors tanked. Um, so I, th- I think that's a horrible thing that they did to her. And I think they made some regretful decisions later realizing that they went too far, right? They catered to the left. They played into their ball field instead of being, you know, stalwart in their own defense. Like, yeah, some people are going to make some uh, mean jokes. That's just, you know, freedom of speech. She's a comedian. She's a that's comedian. What she does that's what we do. Living. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're allowed to make uh, jokes. It's funny. Kind of um, Kevin Hart, uh, who recently had a step down from the, I guess, giving a talk or hosting the Academy or something like that. He made some jokes making fun of uh, gay people. <laughs> well, he made a joke saying like, uh, I just saw a guy uh, eat chicken, put it in his mouth and just with one swoop stripped it down to the bone. And so that's the gayest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and <laughs> so, so, so they're thinking, oh, he's homophobic and all this sort of stuff. Like, Jesus Christ. Uh, but of course, it's OK to make fun of uh, white people. That stuff is still out there. It's OK to make fun of uh, males. It's you know? one of the last topics you can make fun yeah, of, right? Yeah. There's, there's nothing left. Right. Uh, so I think they went too far on that. Um, even with the Boy Scouts, like recently right now, they're going to insolvency. Uh, they can't hold strong to uh, their beliefs to kind of play into the left uh, and cater to that. Uh, and so like they're opening it up to girls joining the Boy Scouts. And, you know, they say, well, maybe it's because of some lawsuits they were going to have to face bankruptcy. But over 100 years, they've been doing really well, keeping these traditional values and making Boy Scouts for boys. And finally, when they kind of open up to all this sort of weird stuff, uh, that they're about to be dissolved, right? Right. Uh, and boys and girls learn differently. Um, their interests and things are differently. They find like even um, monkeys that they've even surveyed, like they put toys in front of the male monkeys kind of, the, the, 
the boys kind of gravitate to cars and the girls like the <laughs> dolls, right? Uh, I was talking to a, a neuro uh, surgeon uh, a few days ago who lent me uh, the mixer. And he was saying, yeah, he, he said that because I was bringing up that there's even a uh, pattern of differences in the brain that you can look at MRI scans and stuff like that. And you can, you can see like nine out of 10 times which one's a male and which one's a female, right? And he said, yeah, you, you, could, you can see that. Uh, and then he brought up an interesting joke saying that in terms of like uh, emotional aptitude, in terms of like uh, speaking to other people, uh, you'll find that the brain for a female highlights in both sides of the brain. Uh, for the male, highlights only on the left side, hmm. right? And so females will say, well, see, we used the full capacity of our brains. <laughs> but the males would, it, but a good comeback for the male would be like, we're so efficient, they will only need to use the left side. <laughs> Half my brain tied behind my back. <laughs> right. As Rush Limbaugh would say. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a definitely, uh, you always hear, you know, women are more people-centered, whereas men are more thing-centered. Right. And men are more interested in, uh, equipment or technology or or working on something yeah. or whatever and so yeah that and you know it's just the in our society with the boy scouts that's this is an anachronistic entity that we don't need anymore you know boys that's what is a boy anyway let's right. just change the definition of that and santa claus why does he have to what does he have to be a, a man why can't he be a woman now <laughs> Right. Uh, this fictional guy. We need to figure out what his fictional gender is as well. Right. <laughs> I think, though, it was a good sign to see um, the right hold fast to due process and hold back to some of these traditions of like, if you're accused, first the evidence. And uh, again, as Kavanaugh, uh, he did the Patriot Act, the kind of things you could have brought up against him. And that's so much as defend of, defense of him because of that. I think it's just defense in general of if you're accused of a crime, where's the evidence, right? Innocent until proven guilty. Right. I think those are good principles that we still could, should continue to the future, right? And I think they did a good job uh, at least backing him with that and uh, not just throwing him under the rug at the first accusation that came through. Um, otherwise, if they did do that, I think that would have given a green light for the left realizing that this tactic, <laughs> this strategy can work. Can win. Right. Right. That is that is a good point. I mean, that could be used against anybody, anybody, a, a left wing judge, if, if he were or he or she were ever to right. and even outside of that. Right. They always just sent uh, a dog whistle to all the leftists. Look, you can ruin anyone's life. Just accuse them of a uh, sex crime. Right. And then we've set a precedent. You know, court cases like to set a precedent. Right. This will be the precedent for that. And there was never a discussion. Yeah. This entire thing caused all of the real the real problems with Kavanaugh's. <laughs> like you mentioned the Patriot Act and his support of it to, to go by the wayside. Right. And, right. And, and so no real discussion occurred regarding those issues, but um, you know, th this became the important issue and that was a shame. Right. Yeah. They wasted a good opportunity. Um, other holes in for testimony. Interesting. Aside from the ex-boyfriend, it kind of just blew everything away because she lied about all that stuff. Cause they also asked her, have you ever uh, given help? You know how to be a polygraph test, right? And she said no. Ex boyfriend said, uh, yes, yeah, she, she's, she's done some of that. Uh, so she said, um, holds on her testimony, changed the account of when the assault took place three times, All right? You can say maybe it's because she's 150 years old. You know, people have difficulty remembering each sort of things. Um, but, you know, she also said uh, she didn't name, um, she didn't even name Kavanaugh as the assailant until his name was widely reported, like you mentioned, right? You had all this moment, you had all this time. But it wasn't until uh, this last minute uh, that you kind of want to put it out there right. instead of reporting it to the police. Right. Even if there's like, well, you know, there's like a 40 year um, in terms of like the statute of limitations in terms of reporting people. I think that's even they'd even have it a Cosby. Right. Right. I think uh, I don't know if statute of limitations have passed or anything like that, but it seems like it took place a long time ago that they're still able to sentence him. Right. Um, so you find uh that that could have st still been something she could have done, gone to the cops. Right. She says she doesn't remember who invited her to the party, or how she heard about it. How she got there. How she got there. How she left. All right. Or how even she got home afterwards, right? You would think that you had just incurred like the most violent thing that happened in your young adulthood life, right? You're, she says she, she claims she was groped, forced into the bed, and then the guy got off of her, him. And uh, you think you'd remember how you got home after that, right? Or who... If you don't think that you can get home, that someone would have brought you home, you'd remember that person. Or 
you know, it was certainly wasn't in an Uber, but you right. can yeah. you can imagine though, how did I typically get home after going to parties like that? Or what did I typically do? You don't have cell phones. This is like what? Nineteen twenties yeah. or something? Or, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is um, you know, th- this is the Middle Ages, I think. Right. But yeah. what she said at the time. Right. But and the also um, imprinted on your mind would be: Did you go to the neighbor and knock on their door and ask? You know, this guy uh, just assaulted me. I mean, that would have been, I would think, the typical. The, well, that could have been a reaction that she had, and she. So I would think that she would at least say, "I I think I went and did this, or I think I went and did that." Right. But there's none of that. It's just, I don't know. Because those are verifiable things that she could have done. She left behind some friends at the party. Don't you think it'd be behoover to kind of warn them, right? Hey, this can happen to you. Let's get out of here. Um, you know, so it's kind of like, uh, or even kind of warning, because this, this apparently happens uh, often, these kinds of parties. But she didn't really do much to kind of warn her friends of that threat either. Um, yeah, so she doesn't remember who was at the gathering. So doesn't know where it took place. And her story has not even been corroborated by anyone, including her lifelong friend. Who she puts at the party? Wasn't that? Yeah. Yeah, that girl was at the party. Yeah. And so, yeah, the the people who... No, the, the, one of the big ones are the ex-boyfriend who has no reason to lie or say anything to even chime in, really. He had no reason to say that she cheated on him or that she committed fraud. Right. Because... He's probably not a vehement like pro-lifer or anything like that. The odds are anyway. But anyway, and also um, the lifelong friend has every reason to agree with her because surely she went to a bunch of parties around that time frame. She might have gone to Brett Kavanaugh's house. Let's say she she could say, yeah, sure. I, we, we did that all the time with Brett Kavanaugh. Right. And I, you know, it's like, and and even when you think about your own college experience or whatever, remembering some of the details of that is difficult though, but you certainly know the typical things you did and where you went and who you hang out, hung out with and what you definitely never did too. Right. My college experience here in Richmond has been a lot of fun. (laughs) The fan is like the best area for all these parties. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons why I chose to stay in Richmond too. It was uh, the fan area of uh, going to VCU because you can walk down like on any night, any weekend night, uh, and you're just invited to parties. Um, which is different, of course, if you live in DC, right? So, like, it's a suburbia nation there. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to make a friend, they have to live in the same zip code. Uh, and so, there's really not much of a. <laughs> it wasn't like that at William in Williamsburg. Oh, that's right. You went, went to Williamsburg, college. right? Yeah. <laughs> we, yeah. There, you didn't just walk down a street and get invited into a party. Yeah. It didn't quite work like that. <laughs> you had to be wearing, uh, you know, your colonial outfit, and maybe then you got, you made friends. There was, <laughs> right. Did you? Did no. you? no. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't have any friends. That was it. I actually got into an argument with uh, some guy who was pretending as a postal worker in Williamsburg. And I was talking about like abolishing the post the post office. <laughs> and uh, so like nobody was inside the store and we just argued back and forth. And it was like, huh, huh. And then like people walk walk in and like he had to change character. Well, kind of go back because like um, he was still in character arguing about it. But he doesn't want to look like he's arguing with like someone coming in like who's visiting. <laughs> So he had to become nice and friendly, like the typical U.S. postal right, yeah. <laughs> employee. Who <laughs> throws our mail down a ravine? It's happened here. <laughs> Happens all the time here in Richmond. Uh, I found one where, like, um, I think I found like, I think the trash can area in which like a postal worker just kind of chucked all the mail in there. It's like didn't have time for all this. It's kind of just accrued over time, uh, and they just kind of threw it out. I was going on to a, uh, a government facility in Northern Virginia one time, and. They have usually like police officers, right, who man the gate at the front. And uh, so one time I was going up and I pulled up and this guy, the police officer is laughing with one of his, uh, you know, co-workers over there. And then he looks towards me and he's smiling and then he's like, and he gets into character. He gets like (laughs) into government police guy character. And you're just like, man, I was like smiling because... He goes like, oh, you guys are telling a funny joke. Like, that's cool. Let me hear it. And here's my idea or whatever. All right. But it wasn't like that. As soon as he looked at me, he's like, all business. And uh, it's just funny. You know, it's like they've got to maintain that sort of <laughs> get back into character. And that was time. my character in the military. Sometimes In the first year, I would do uh, gate duty. 
as a security forces, so checking IDs. Right. So like they say you're supposed to like ask how they're doing or, or say something to them if they respond to you. So like, uh, you know, I see their, their ID. It's like, have an exciting day. <laughs> and uh, it's like they'll say, well, oh, thank you. Uh, you know, have a good day. Have an exciting day. And uh, so it's not like the exciting day guy uh, <laughs> yeah. passing through. <laughs> I got a, I got an award for a general thinking I was the most professional uh, because that would be like very ro- robotic, cold, stoic. I was like, uh, ID, please. Have an exciting day. And kind of like sometimes they'll <laughs> say like, because sometimes it'll be raining. Like, uh, you know, stay dry. It's like, thanks. Have an exciting day. It's kind of passed through. So when the commander came in to give me a, a coin, it was at a, out of nowhere. So like, I'm, it's after shift. I have to stick around still in the morning because uh, uh, a general is going to come through and give someone uh, a coin or something like that. I didn't know it was going to be me. Mm. So I'm kind of tired. I'm in the back row. I got my beret off because you're indoors. You have to take off your beret. Uh, I, I had the longest hair in the Air Force at the time. Uh, super long. Uh, after two years, they stopped trying to get me in trouble because the key word was a quarter inch in bulk. Yes. Has to be tapered, can't touch the ears, can be can be below the uh, earlobe. So yeah, got it. When you were a bray, you cover all that up. Um, but it, when you're indoors, you have to take the bray off if you're not on duty. And mm-hmm. the commander is about to give me a coin. I mean, a general is giving me a coin for being like the most professional uh, on base. <laughs> and as I, as like my friend like nudges me because he the commander mentions my name twice for me to come on stage because there's a general there. Uh, and it's like, oh, fuck. So I kind of walk over there and I see like all my uh, superiors there, my um, uh, lieutenant. And you're just uh, like flicking them off. Yeah, I know. Like <laughs> proverbially. Yeah. They're all looking at me kind of going like this. Because <laughs> for the longest time, they're trying to find a way to, to get me in trouble. And, they, and they here I'm presented for like being the most professional. <laughs> that's perfect yeah that yeah. that's always uh it, it is weird how you get rewarded sometimes like or when you least expect it you're just like why what you know it would, did i do anything All right well, maybe not but i'm gonna take it yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna run with it <laughs> so i think uh ford had was kind of two-faced right. in that interview very two-faced if you saw again like that video of her you know congratulating this athlete and so her neck is up high you know she's talking kind of normally now, right she's talking like yes you know I'm, i support you i applaud you i'm glad i could be an inspiration to you versus her testimony uh, so then she tried like you know this this happened and i'm gonna make up this lie and he wants eight twix for kids and you know twix are for adults <laughs> uh so total total lie uh which brings up rape stats which is interesting you brought it up in the group a while ago I came across it as well because somebody was kind of pushing that out there. Right. Uh, making it seem like it's very insignificant. Yeah, that graphic. Right. 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 The person who posted that, I think the one you sent me the link, uh, deleted it. Oh, yeah. interesting. Because it was a, it came from a, like a left wing source. Like it wasn't something that I had figured right. out. Right. Yeah. Right. I guess they realized they kind of were wrong on that. Uh, so the statistics that was kind of put out saying like 10%, right, of the rape accusations are, uh, or false, just 10%, right? Not a lot. Um, or one out of the 11 rape accusations are false. Right. Right. Um, but they don't point out that those are the only cases where concrete evidence is present, or even after the case is settled, the accuser that comes out admits that lied. Right. So this happens after conviction. This happens uh, after the person's already, you know, put into the system and has already have a, a mark on their name. Um, and so this is not to say that there's much more other cases that this could be happening to, all right? This is only what we've already proven so far. Uh, so it kind of belittles even the 10th percent of people that are, who are accused, falsely accused. Right. Rape, right. Uh, so of course it's kind of funny when they kind of bring up numbers in terms of, well, you know, 0.001% of the oceans full of ocean straws and let's kind of, you know. Uh, handicap Americans when most of actually the straws that are in the oceans are coming from like men mainland places like China, right? Big time polluters out there, not for the United States. Um, but you know, they'd also look at, uh, other numbers that say it was insignificant when like, uh, gun deaths are that are involved or represent like 0.00004% of the population. Right. That's when small percent of numbers matter right. to them. Right. Something like 10%. Doesn't matter to them. Yeah. Right. So I think it's kind of funny how they kind of like cherry pick and pick the significance of uh, when these cases and numbers do matter and when they do not to kind of fit their narrative. 
Right. There's a there's always a media drumbeat for these these issues that come out of nowhere, these people who come out of nowhere and are suddenly thrust into the spotlight and they're they're the important issue or person and for the time. You know, I liken it to uh, Amy Schumer. You know, she comes out of nowhere. All of a sudden, we're supposed to, like, care about her movies and we're supposed to care about her comedy. And you and then but you watch it and you're like, this is not special. This is not funny. This is not good. <laughs> Sue was supposed to be Sue was brought up to be Barbie at one point. Mm. They were going to make a movie about Barbie, <laughs> and they were putting her up to be to star as Barbie. Hmm. Right? That's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, not Taylor Swift or you know any yeah. of these these babes in Hollywood. No, it's going to yeah. be Amy Schumer. Amy Schumer, right? Her uh, jokes about how her vagina smells like uh, a barnyard animal. Right. It, and, the, and these are just chucked out there as well, this is log. real comedy yeah. right now. Yeah. Uh, NPC console log, uh, quotation, laugh, and quotation. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. There, it, so you, you hear these things, and this is the issue of the day. And so that, that one um, post that you, you mentioned, it, showed all uh rape accusations and then it showed like maybe it was like a hundred little dots right and so a certain percentage of the dots were um just convicted rapists right and and so this the all these dots by the way claim to be every single instance of rape and so there's a small one that a tiny portion of them are actually followed through toward conviction of the the criminal and then it goes out and shows more and more that are not, uh, they're not convicted or they're never reported or, and then, um, the one tiny dot out of like a hundred says, uh, Oh, this, this was a false accusation. Right. And you think that's, that's unfortunate because that's clearly not true. There's clearly more than that. I mean, plenty of people lie, men and women lie. Right. Right. So no, no, believe all women, dude. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> sorry uh gender is female <laughs> female is uh, one above all males um you need to check your privilege and hashtag believe all women um unfortunately the believe all women didn't particularly play well for uh several of these people that we kind of are going to bring up against these false accusations right most recently the uh duke lacrosse case right versus the uh believe all women when in 2006, there was a criminal case on three members of a uh, Duke Lacrosse team members. They were false accused of rape. Right. Um, and it, I remember when that was happening and how quickly. Uh, Pass or not? There we go. Thanks. Now Creek, please sponsor us. 100 proof. Please give <laughs> us to that. Give us that for free instead of making us pay for it. Thank you. <laughs> Where they were. It was some kind of party. There was a student who uh, was also a dancer. And so they hired her to come dance at a party there. A couple of members there. And uh, it turned out she was already kind of drunk. She was kind of flailing around, uh, passing out. Weird stuff. But later she would come out and accuse them of rape. And it was such a debacle that like they brought the entire lacrosse team out there for DNA testing. Even people who weren't even there. Um, but the way that this was presented, because these were white males, uh, they were automatically shown by the media guilty. Uh, they're trying to make this a race thing. They're trying to make this look, this is a, uh, structural racism, uh, so going on institutional racism. Uh, you know, let's back this person up because she's black. Uh, not just kind of like yeah, Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson came out of the woodwork. To right. Yeah. Yeah. Support her. Right. Uh, so, and it turns out she lied about it, she made it up, uh, but you can't immediately imagine like what happens to these people's lives after, after 2006, right? Uh, where they have like the social stigma, especially for like, especially hardened in the first couple of years afterwards. Um, they're, they were suspended for two games while this was going on. I think the coach got kicked out, uh, so yeah, I think this sort of stuff kind of, you know, people say believe all women. It's like they don't right. even kind of look at like the instances where uh, where people did believe all women and they lied and the negative consequences of that, which is why we just kind of go back to our traditional 
of cultural uh, value of due process. Right. All right. Yeah. The, um, the attorney, the prosecutor who, the district attorney for Durham County, North Carolina, Mike Nifong was the prosecutor in that case. And, or I guess he was the district attorney in that case. And he ended up uh, being disbarred for his role in charging these guys. So what he did was so egregious and the case was so thin uh, to the point that he was disbarred right. for, for his, his part in it. And that tells you something that's hard to do. It's right, for a state prosecutor to kind of disbar a state prosecutor, it's very extreme. It's rare. Kind of like um, you can't really sue a judge. Extremely rare. Disbar a judge, extremely rare. Right? doesn't really happen. Right. But yeah, like you mentioned, I think you only spend like a day in jail or something like that. I think uh, it's kind of like those uh, fake rape accusations that come out. The uh, like, what, what do you think should happen? Right? If it comes out that it was false, a lie, uh, the woman that made that accusation should face the jail sentence that would have been given to that guy. Right. 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 I mean, there's there's a huge difference between um, it being a complete and total fabrication and like. You, you know, you think that he did it and maybe, you know, it, it, the details come out in trial or whatever, and it turns out not to be the case. Um, that's, you know, that's one thing. But to just have completely fabricated something right, and to have lied about it and to put somebody's life in such disarray. I mean, those guys' lives are never going to be the same. Never going to be the same. <laughs> it's done. And they can't sue her. She doesn't have any money, you know. <laughs> right. right. So, they end up suing, uh, I think, the city and... I don't know what else, but um, yeah, nothing happened to her. Did she go to jail for that? Did she, uh, you know, face any consequence of that? Right. No. The only consequences she faced <laughs> actually happened much later, unrelated. Um, she was arrested on charges of attempted murder of her living partner, Milton Walker. And then not that long ago, in 2013, November, she was found guilty of second degree murder after she stabbed her boyfriend. Right. Died 10 days later after she attacked him. So was sentenced to 14, 18 years in prison. So that's, you know, when they'll put her in, in, a, in a cage, right? Not for false accusations. Right. That was proven. Yeah. Right. And and she has three children and she's in jail. And this is the, uh, the you know, this person who has done all this damage to all these people, you know, was her level of testimony was put before these guys and and you just wonder you know why like uh because the media doesn't value due process the left is mostly controlled by the leftist media right so you know these sort of things they're looking for a sensational news story and uh anything that can portray the white man as a evil you know sells for them right uh kind of like what you were bringing up earlier about um adam carolla (laughs) and uh the break-in commercials of like a guy is going to break in and burglarize they're always depicted as white guys right right uh, so for them, the cells, if the perpetrator's a white guy, the cells will blow it up. Uh, and a lot of people were in on it. A lot of people were out there depicting it, even be- before the evidence was put forth, before they can even hear the other guy's testimony. Right. Right. Adam Carolla always talks about that with the, uh, you know, the guy's got the typical burglar cap on yeah. <laughs> and, uh, maybe even the mask and, and, uh, the jailbird clothes and stuff. And he's, he's you know, about to break into the house. And yeah, um, it's, it's going back to that, that idea of the only acceptable group to pick on is, is these white, white guys, because right. they're the ones who are empowered. Right. And, right. But, um, so it's like, if you watch an ADT commercial, you're going to get the impression that only, you know, these white guys are breaking into people's houses all the time. But it turns out, um, that's that's not the case. That's not the case. <laughs> when you look at like statistics, you look uh, white populations in terms of uh, white people who commit crimes versus uh, racists, since they're making this a race thing. Right. Uh, you look at uh, black populations being extremely higher in right. terms of burglary, rape, murder, um, theft, uh, and between that would be uh, Hispanics, Latinos like right. myself. Uh, and b- below that would be uh, white people, right? Right. And Asians far below oh, yeah. white, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> they're too busy uh you making know studying money. yeah making money yeah <laughs> but yeah that so it's it's going back to this well we gotta we have a case now 
where we've got a um, bunch of white guys who did this wrong to this right. to this woman, and so we've got to milk that for all it's worth. And it then as soon as it turns out poorly, it's like, oh no, we well, let's tamp that down. Let's not talk about that in the media because because you you heard about it, but you didn't necessarily hear about they were completely vindicated, you know. Right, and so. It's uh, that's the sad part, and you certainly probably most people probably don't know that she, she was convicted of second degree See, murder. Like again, going back to like a pattern of history, she has a pattern of history of uh, being involved in a lot of nefarious affairs, a lot of nefarious activities. Uh, this, I mean, you you sort of look at that. Sometimes they say you can't bring this stuff up in court in terms of like, uh, you know, I'm not saying promiscuity, but I guess kind of something in relation to that. But I think it does bring in a judgment of their kind of character. Uh, and people can change, sure, but there should be a time frame between when you change and when this pattern of behavior does start to evolve and turns you're a better person. But there is never such a case with this person. I mean, you look in her history. Um, and there's other people uh, on this list of believable women. Uh, Tawana Brawley is a woman from uh, Wapapingers Falls, New York. This is up in like 1987, 88. She falsely accused for white men of raping her. Uh, and she gained a lot of national attention. She uh, was found in a trash bag with racial slurs all over her body and covered in shit, feces. <laughs> and it turns out she lied about that, right? So I think it's interesting how far, especially her, she'll have to go out there just to kind of prove or make a regret decision just to put herself in that position. She has to be found how long has she been waiting for someone to come across her? Right. Be in a trash bag that she put herself in, covered in shit, and writing uh, racial slurs on herself. It had to, yeah, it had to appear as bad as possible. Right. Right. And you're finding out, uh, especially in this past year or two alone, like a lot of these like racial slurs on campus or on a church turn out to be uh, Muslims, turn out to be uh, the very people that uh, these slurs are against. Right. Uh, turn right. out to be like a... Like all these like KKK signs burned down in a, a church trying to be some black guy. Um, and so you, there was a, like a, a mislabeling of like this uh, Muslim woman on a, a New York subway train saying like these white guys took off her her, uh, her her cover and she made it up. There was no evidence for that. Right? She lied about it. Think about the typical white guy you know who lives in New York too. I mean, you're talking about some like guy who's wearing skinny jeans. And right. Yeah. And, like th- that's, that's soy. That's, right. That's, that's a multicultural country. It's like. There's not a lot of murders that go on in New York. I mean, like maybe like one a day or something like that or a week uh, in terms of like given the population, that's not bad. Given like Baltimore, there's like murder like every other hour or something like that. It's They have a section of the newspaper in Baltimore saying like murder of the week and they detail exactly how the person's murdered. And I remember reading this Ooh. about like some guy um, was driving in their car. You know, going, you know, transit and trying to go to work. And someone pulled up right next to them on like a moped and just started firing. Wow. Yeah. And that was that. That was the murder of the week of Baltimore. That's brutal. Yeah. You think yeah. about, you know, you, I, sometimes I watch, um, I was reading about or listening to this discussion about Jimmy Hoffa recently, who they're finding more and more evidence to suggest that maybe he was murdered at this house in Detroit and uh, for, you know, by the mob or whatever. And so... But you think, you know, there was a time when if you went to New York or downtown Manhattan or something and some guy got shot in the street, just gunned down, uh, it was like, oh, yeah, that's the mob. Yep, that's what they're doing. And so, but in Baltimore now, that stuff is still going on. Right. But we don't necessarily, you know, say, well, that's the mob, you know, because it's, uh, but it is a, a, an unfortunate reality for for. Um, when you have these policies that uh, it has to do with uh, white supremacy, even though, uh, you know, uh, chief of police is black, uh, the mayor is black, most of the city council members are black. Right. right. Yeah. No, still blame uh, the white man for that. <laughs> right. It's it's parts of the country that have been dominated by the Democratic machine. Right. For so long. And you say, well, surely you can't put this on the, fl- you know. You can't blame Mitt Romney for this or somebody like that. Right. Versus Eminem talking about rap about uh, leftist politicians destroying his eight mile road in uh, Detroit. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. It's all Trump. I love how Trump didn't uh, respond to him at all. And he comes back out again, kind of whining about that. 
<laughs> hey, Trump, I didn't hear you talking to me about this. Yeah, he's he's a real uh, interesting dude. He's got a bunch of work done on his face or something. Right. Yeah. I don't know what to make of that guy anymore. I don't know. <laughs> Matthew Myers. <laughs> so then you have uh, Jackie from UVA. This happened not that long ago. This is a Rolling Stone article in which they kind of took a, a word of Jackie Coakley, who only identified by Jackie by the Rolling Stones, saying that she was um, taken to a party hosted by the UVA's Phi Kappa Psi fraternity. And uh, she indicates that she was gang raped, uh, part of an initiation rate. Uh, turned out to be false. No evidence for that. Uh, like, there's like in police investigations. Everyone's looking around like, what happened? Like, who, who is this person? Like, where, where did right. this take place? Total BS. She was like slammed through a glass table or something yeah. like that. And um, so she claimed. And so there would have been just an ungodly number of scars on her back or right. legs. or And, um, you know, none of this stuff shook out. And it was the weirdest thing if, because the the quickness with which people believed it. And then it went out the door like a week later or right. something like that. This doesn't help with like, there's like this statistics saying like one out of like four college students are going to get raped at a, at a campus um i mean if those were the odds right uh i, I wouldn't send my kids to that right <laughs> <laughs> right right All right. right um again they're trying to make it so prevalent a lot of this uh leftist rhetoric to make uh males to be the most uh evil vile creatures out there uh, that they have to make up these kind of statistics, right? Kind of like along the lines of um, uh, the pay gap, right? Like males are, you know, subduing women and pushing them down from having an equal wage, and that's been proven time and time again, a hundred times, thousands of times. That's false, right? Yeah, these are the these are the um, criminals that we want, though, right? We want the frat boys to be the bad guys, right? Yeah, it's like in those classic movies of like Battle of the Nerds, uh, you know, uh, with Burger. Uh, versus uh, the jocks. Um, but that's not really the case. <laughs> right. <laughs> nerds, nerds, nerds. Yeah, that 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 is a classic that I need to revisit pretty yeah. <laughs> soon. UVA, you know, but that's another place. Like, you think, uh, do you go to UVA and get the sense that there's all these depraved maniacs just cruising around? Uh, I mean, even the worst of the worst that, you know, you may have known in college or whatever, it it seems like these um these caricatures almost are just like erotic fan literature or something right. by by some of the, like what she wrote down was so horrible that couldn't have been true and any reasonable um journalist would have said that or would right. have realized that at some point by corroborating but they didn't do any kind of effort no. and <clears throat> um that that goes to tell you what that was the result they wanted rolling stones I think they got right. awarded like error of like journalism of the year or something like that. Um, and it doesn't even stop there at UVA because you also have, um, right. Not the, not that, uh, well, I guess kind of for mattress girl, <laughs> Emma. So Cowes, an American fourth year visual arts major at Columbia university in New York filed a complaint at Columbia university, uh, seeking the expulsion of a student that she had uh, consensual sex with. All right. Paul Nogan, sir. And she alleged that uh, he had raped her in a dorm. And uh, it was found uh, not responsible by a university inquiry. Uh, I mean, just the quickness of to uh, say that someone's a rapist, the quickness to say that someone's guilty, I think is kind of appalling in some of these cases, especially her because she's making like a, an artistic scene about her carrying her mattress 50 pounds uh, all over campus and trying to take his expulsion. And like, where his, where is his protection against that? Right. Right. How easy it is for anyone to kind of accuse you of something like that without evidence or without due process uh, and how quickly someone can kind of ruin their time at university. And an additional layer is this college system that they so you have uh, an additional uh, judicial layer. Right. So once even if your name's been completely cleared by the police or they found no evidence to right. prove this, there's still the college which will have its own quote unquote kangaroo court or they whatever. Do, yeah, yeah. And and they'll so they will say, well, no, this actually did happen. And so you're expelled and your life is all that money that you spent here. Well, we're gonna keep that, but you're gonna have to go somewhere else. Guy. Right. Uh he sued them and uh I think he won, settled out of court. Um 
Well, yeah, believe I'll win. All right. Right. Um, then there's the biggest case, <clears throat> I think, of interest in terms of the left to saying believe a woman, because you know they always kind of like to use minorities as their token uh, lapdogs of like injustice to kind of advocate for. Uh, you have Emmett Till, uh, and this happened in like 1950s. Right. Uh, Emmett Till was a 14 year old young man from Mississippi who was lynched by Roy Bryant and his half brother John William on August 28th, 1955. And they had heard rumors that Till had wolf whistled uh, or made uh, physical advances with a Caroline Bryant, Roy's wife. And because of that, they, they murdered him. They killed him. They found his body uh, bloated, shotgun to the head, floating in a river. And of course, uh, they were found out guilty. And it wasn't until a couple of years recently, in 2008, decades later, right? Caroline Bryant admitted uh, making it all up. Lie. Right. Believe all women. And that's, yeah, the, uh, the cruel, I mean, uh, Dave Chappelle talks about that in one of his more recent really? uh, yeah, comedy specials. And he alludes to, you know, Emmett Till being this kid who said, and, right. and uh, that was all it took. Yeah. And she didn't like that maybe. And, you know, and maybe, you know, that was rude or something. And so that was like his death sentence. And so you think that's a, that, that's a different, like we think about that today and that, you know, like that's um, mild, pretty mild compared to anything, you know? <laughs> well, the left would actually would call out, I will say death sentences for, right. for whistling. He would be in trouble for, for cackling. Yeah. He would be, <laughs> you know, he would have been uh, deplatformed on YouTube right. today. If uh, the if there's like, um, I forget where in Europe, if there's like evidence of you being sexist, you know, that's like a sentence already there. Um, right. Manspreading, mansplaining, uh, you know, these would be severe crimes and a leftist utopia. Yeah. 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 And, and this was one fact that uh, gets ignored too is Emmett Till was from Chicago. So he was visiting his, um, cousins and, and family down in Mississippi and, and his mom, I think said, you got to be careful down there because it's not the same as it is up here. And, uh, so he didn't necessarily know the you know, the unspoken rules, I guess, or whatever crazy stuff that they all lived by uh, back then. So it, but yeah, it is, it is another example of on uh, the unfortunate, the uh, process that, well, and, and to, for her to admit to it too, all, you know, right. Cause th that makes her into a, a real villain, you know, does she spend the rest of her years in prison for that? Right. Right. They do it to, um, people who escaped uh, Nazi Germany who who were Nazis, right? I think there was recently uh, some guy who was like a prison guard not that long ago uh, sent back to, uh, I guess, Israel to face crimes or something like that, right? Uh, did you hear about that? Um, Eichmann? Uh, was yeah. It? Well, I know that I know Eichmann was kidnapped in uh, like Argentina because he, uh, he had round the railroads in Nazi Germany. He was kidnapped by Mossad, <laughs> incidentally. But so this is a uh, ex-Nazi guard in U.S. He's now ninety-five. Oh, okay. Yeah, not deported to Israel. He's deported to Germany. Got it. So he was uh, living a quiet life in the <laughs> uh, corners of New York City for decades. Hmm. Um, and so he was recently tracked down by investigators in nineteen ninety-three, stripped of his American citizenship ten years later. Federal grand jury found him, a uh, federal judge found him, uh, he falsely claimed uh, his application to come here in the U.S. to be false. Uh, so they sent him back. So on Tuesday, this happened um, when in April, August. So on Tuesday, Trump has secured his deportation to uh, apprehend him, wheel him on a stretcher from his home in Queens, and to be taken by air ambulance. Uh, and send him to Germany to face uh, his crimes. Right. Right. So there's no limit on justice in that case, right? Right, yeah. No, no so, matter how old you are. Right, right. Oh, look, I'm so frail. Sorry, we could do this to, to Nazis, right? Why can't you do this to uh, people who falsely accuse themselves? Right. I mean, this is another thing in terms like with Trump and people say, well, he's fascist. Well, if he's fascist, he wouldn't have sent, you know, uh, acknowledge the paperwork and let it go through, right? Um, there's a lot of things we can say about Trump and uh, debate his platforms. But I think it's kind of ridiculous. It kind of, like you mentioned, uh, to kind of equate 
rape with group or rape with uh, people who are falsely alleging that it happened right. uh, to be a great injustice towards actual crimes. Um, it does a great injustice to actual fascism or actual Nazism. Right. Yeah. The you would you would think that the real victims of rape would be the the most vociferous opponents to these these people. Right. And uh, you know, I I recall that uh, Emmett Till's mom also posted it, or she she kept a photo of of his dead body and posted it, you know, in a magazine to ensure that people saw it and uh, they. You know, they said, yeah, that's that's what really happened to, you know, her son. And uh, that I think that was important, you know, to be able to say th- these lies have real consequences. Yeah. So, and even if even if it hadn't been a lie. Right. I mean, who cares that she lied? Ultimately, he didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. He just used words. Right. And we're all supposed to be bigger than that. Right. I mean, <clears throat> you could say that's the problem. Like, all right. So our user question for the end of the show would be. um. Uh, you can say like freedom of speech in terms of like what about freedom of speech in um in a private road uh, or public property like you have like the Westboro Baptist Church coming out there and can stand in front of your house if they want to because it's a public sidewalk or they can go in front of like uh, cemeteries and kind of lambast and ruin the experience right um so in terms of like cat whistling and the cultural norms I mean uh I mean if you go to like a gated community they would have already established like the norms that are allowed in there right. Um, but when you open everything up to be public property as well, um, anyone can come easy, go easy in, uh, in your neighborhood. Right. Right. Uh, in front of your doorsteps or right there on the sidewalk, because technically it's private property, uh, and they can harass and they can, um, you know, be right. degenerates out there. Right. It creates lots of little avenues and inlets for people to become a part of your life who otherwise might not become a part of your life right uh yeah so in in a place where public property reigns over private property uh yeah you're you're forced to contend with those kinds of uh cultural norms that you don't want to see in your lives like um somebody wants to have like a naked city go for it you know just don't come to my street naked right right but you really can't have i mean i guess there are laws against nakedness uh but uh, or like swearing or, you know, just uh, causing a vulgar scene outside of your house. Sure. Uh, you really can't stop that. Uh, it's still technically, they'll say it's free speech, but I believe in free speech, but I also believe in private property. And that's almost like why the movie theater, you'll get kicked out of you, you'll fire while there's a movie playing. Right. Right. Uh, property rights trumps free speech in that respect. Um, so if a lot of leftists don't want to hear a lot of like, I would say, advancing dialogues or conversations that can help push us further as like uh, due process has. And that conversation that took place like hundreds of years ago, thousands maybe, uh, like the total Roman times. Um, right. I think uh, those conversations, if they don't want to hear it, then they can have their safe space, leftist community, where people who want to advance society, yeah, sure, we won't go into your communities and talk about this stuff. <laughs> uh, granted, don't come here and try to harang or try to uh, stop the proceeding of uh, advancement of western civilization right yeah there's there is an interesting i mean there's so many precedents for that when you think about uh these intentional communities that like um the amish or the hutterites or different people who have just who decided that they're going to live apart from everybody else right and most of us don't have any issue leaving them alone. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we don't need to go into what they've got and take what they've got or involve ourselves. But the ultimate problem is that with the left, they want what you have. Right. And uh, they want to be able to take what you have. And if they're not in on your system, they, there's no means for them to commit theft. And it, it's only here in Western cultures that they'll try to commit that and stop that and um, seize that. Other cultures where they're doing the exact thing in which they're against, vehemently against, like in Middle Eastern countries, um, they'll uh, they'll turn a blind eye to, right? Right, right. Yeah. Those are the victim classes. They've right. got a very right. they've got a very compartmentalized view of how <laughs> how the world works. You know? Right, and that's why I think it's always good. I mean, examine what's going on here um, and critique it, but then also compare it in terms of like the measure of success. Uh, our civilization has had and coming to this moment 
versus uh, the bigger picture of the rest of the world. Right. And uh, I'm not saying like be thankful. It's like I was just saying that just take that into, you know, effect. Uh, right. Be cognizant of that. Um, yeah. I guess there's nowhere else we could be having this conversation probably. I mean, right, yeah. And when you think about uh, the, the steps that led to us being in this room and, and having the ideas that we have, like it only, really only in the United States. I mean, in, in Europe, probably not either. Um, right. Um, <laughs> I was having a conversation with someone a while ago in, at VCU. I forget what the name of the country, maybe it was Indonesia, but it was something to the effect of saying like, you know, uh, these Muslim dominant countries, for example, are very uh, progressive, just as the United States. And it's like, well, name one. And she's like, her place like she's related to, I think it was Indonesia or something like that. Um, and I was like, well, yeah, very, very uh, progressive in that <laughs> the people there who want to join the military, uh, the females, that they have to uh, protect themselves to a two-finger test to see if they're still uh, virgins. Hmm. And that's uh, the military, right? So, like, very progressive, uh, wow. that kind of country, in terms of, like, uh, gender equality, in terms of, like, um, viewing women, right? Um, and not, not in a sense, like, an equal of uh, outcome in terms of, like, what we can do, but saying that, yeah, you're another person, and may the laws that we create here uh, be equal among us, right? And in there, it's not. Right. Right. Two-finger test. Someone's job to kind of put it in someone's mm. uh, vagina, and to check if their hymen is still intact. Wow. So Very you basically have to agree to be raped in order to. Right. Yeah. Right. Wow. So when you look at, uh, I think it's, uh, look how, how, how bad it could be. Look how worse it could be. This is like this book that I picked up when I was in the military. I think it was from like um, Demotivation. Do you remember those uh, demotivational posters? That yeah. Came out? Yeah. Yeah. So, like try really hard and it's a guy falling without a parachute on. Right. Right. <laughs> so like they published a book saying how to demotivize your coworkers. And I bought it uh, when I was in the military. <laughs> it came with a fake uh, cover which says like um, the happiness of a uh, workplace and being a good employee. So it came with a fake uh, cover jacket for it. Uh, the inside title was like how to demotivate your fellow coworkers. Um, and one of the rules was like always uh, bring up like how worse it could be, right? So someone could be wearing a headset that's kind of like uh, it breaks, breaks all the time and kind of zaps them with electricity, right? Yeah. It's like it could be worse, you know, and kind of bring up all their examples where, you know, it could cause death and harm and electrocution. Um, but I don't mean doing it like that, but I'm saying in real life world, there are worse places things could be. And you kind of look upon them like we're advanced and developed enough that we can continue having this conversation uh, and acknowledge them. And I think this is a conversation like in terms of like gender equality has been going on for like in Greek society for like uh, like 2000 years. There's, yeah. there's stories in Greek mythology talking about um, uh, women and empowerment. Um, I'm trying to remember our, uh, one in particular right now. Yeah. Uh, the most I can think of is I always think about. Uh, I always mix up the Roman and the Greek goddesses. And so you end up with like Aphrodite and Diana or whatever. And so they have a bunch of different names for them. And so I always, I always struggle with, uh, with that. But yeah, the, I think there's that the Greeks also had a different sort of uh, view of like human sexuality and things, right. you know, I mean, obviously uh, Alexander wasn't, uh, I think they all pretty much acknowledged that he was, and you'll read um, like Cato or different people will talk about their, uh, who was it? Um, I was reading, uh, oh yeah, it was, uh, it was one of these um, topics where they're talking about stoicism and th one of the writers is saying, and I was pleased to have been able to, um, get away from my love of young boys or something like that. You're just like, right. what? Yeah, actually, I, I remember reading that. I think uh, Plato was uh, kind of put off by that. I think there, there was like a male lover trying to come on to him, and uh, he wasn't kind of having that. Yeah, what I was reading was Marcus Aurelius' uh, Meditations. Yeah, and so he said, you know, he talks about, references that, but I'm sure they all talk. Marcus Aurelius was obviously a Roman, but um, they, they all kind of, yeah, so it, it was a different story back then, <laughs> right? They had different norms. Well, again, it goes back to like uh, even uh, Spartan societies, women had equal uh, rights to property as, as men, right? So right. I think it's uh, it's a good place uh, the Western society and civilization has evolved from and viewing that, compare that to the rest of the world. Um, 
I think it's great that we still keep with these kind of traditions of uh, separation of church and state, due process, freedom right. of speech, these sort of things, um, equality uh, under law, right? Uh, and I think it's uh, good to be stalwarts of that. What would you say, so a critic might come back and say, um, well, that's great, Western civilization, you know, all those great ideas. What about if Western civilization, though, is only as good as the people who are practicing the Western civilization, right? So you have a lot of um, maybe the, a Pat Buchanan type, right? He would always, I remember reading one of his books when, back when I was this, like a conservative or whatever. And he would say, we don't have any birth rates here in the United States, right? So all any these people, birth rates, any birth rates, right? Yeah. And in, in um, the Middle East, they have much higher birth rates. In Indonesia, like you mentioned, they have much higher birth rates. Russia is, is, I guess, kind of a Western country, and they try to encourage their birth rates, and they don't have any. So the argument goes, how does one continue to um, encourage this if people don't really have kits or, or have kids that they spread these ideas to? Right. Yeah, it could be um, its own doom, you can say. Kind of like, um, like Lord of the Rings where the elves are kind of going to go off and just go live off this island or retire for the rest of their lives. Um, it could be like that. Um, could be also Japan also has very low birth rates and a lot of stuff right. you can tie to like economic conditions because people pay a lot for that. And if you're going to pay for the welfare of other people, and for like uh, the host society, mm -hmm. those other people don't really have to work, don't really have to kind of contend much with producing and um, being forced to give up much of the profit that is free for them to kind of continue making a lot of kids. And even inevitably, they'll be replaced with that. Um, and that would be a tricky thing for democracy because democracy means, you know, ruled by a mob majority and inevitably they will be replaced by this new rising new minority group. Uh, it's happening now right now in, uh, in Europe. Um, I think feminism doesn't do a good job and promoting that as well. They're trying to say, you know, you woman can be just as strong and uh, fantastic as you can, right. but trying to say without a man in their life, without marriage, uh, without children. So they they are kind of promoting uh, single parenthood or single uh, womanhood without the. Uh, you know, what it's going to bring in your next uh, contributors to your news article, you can say, right? right. Uh, at the same time, you can also say, maybe that's not a bad thing because the left is advocating for abortions. I mean, that's that's True. their thing, right? Not right. so much for conservatives. So maybe you could say, let them have their abortions. Let them have their own um, way to end themselves. Because if leftists are not are aborting their own children, right. um, there won't be leftists then. Right. If they were a movement of people who said we adamantly support these these particular left wing values right. of, sh you know, taxing people to death and taking all of their wealth and, and giving it away. And oh, and by the way, we love having tons of kids. You know, I read a statistic that um, it's unbelievable when you when you hear the statistic. It's the Amish who numbered maybe like 30,000. No, no. 6,000 in like 1930 mm -hmm. in the United States. Yeah. And. I, I heard a statistic that said it by like 20, 2100, they will be like half the U.S. population or something ridiculous uh, like that. Good. So you say today, I think they're, they number 200,000 or so, some, something like pretty significant. Yeah. They just have so many kids and they just, um, they don't, you know, that that's their life. That's, and yeah. you don't see them. Wow. They'll come in <laughs> to save Western civilization in the end. <laughs> I right it. <laughs> it's so it's so crazy though when you think about that because it's the power of exponential growth right it, it's one of the examples well, they found that. like european uh, birth rates are like 1.3 1.4 very low but you look at the muslims that they kind of import in there's like three point something right right so you do the numbers to crunch it yeah inevitably they'll be replaced uh inevitably they'll be the dominant and the way the government works is mob rules they'll be able to change these laws to sharia laws and, yep. you know, we could do a whole lot worse than a bunch of Amish people who are like, we believe in peace. We don't we don't want war. Right. You live your life. Leave us alone. Right. <laughs> yeah. How many kids do you plan on having? Uh, 25 at least. Same. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. All right.
<laughs> I plan to be like uh, Charlemagne, you know, where like 25% of the world's population is related to me. Why yeah. not? I don't know. You know, yeah. no 32. Same with fine. Genghis Khan. One out well, of, uh, my wife. We'll, we'll see if she's okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if there's a way to kind of make a step triplets and one go, they're done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Boom. Boom. Done. <laughs> Two. Yeah. Sounds great. I'm breaking out my Bill Burr yeah. impression. <laughs> <laughs> the worst Bill Burr impression of all time. But I think it's important uh, to pass this stuff on. I think uh, the thing that hurts a lot of this stuff, again, is government regulations, economics of uh, high taxes. Uh, you can even look at um, uh, what when you when you die, there's a tax that when you die, where like half your stuff belongs to the state, right, in terms of inherent, inherent tax. Um, so it's difficult to pass that on to your children. Um, and that's like a reason why to have kids to pass on to them for them to kind of keep pushing that generation the lineage forward. Right. Right. It, there's, you know, I, somebody who's influenced me surprisingly about this, cause I don't, I don't really follow him on much else, but, uh, Gavin McInnes, who talks a lot about how having families is not that shouldn't be that intimidating, you know, and it's so natural to, uh, to people to have, to have kids, to have families, start families and, Yet society create does create this idea that oh that's terrifying. Can you afford that? You know, right. and it's like meanwhile, um, a lot of a lot of these people around the world don't think that wonder if they can afford it. You know, right. only only Western people who are affluent seem to <laughs> worry about right. being able to afford it. I mean, look at these conditions where a lot of the kids are born like born uh, poor. You know, uh, different areas. Like, come on, like if they can have kids, you can have kids, <laughs> right? Um, I mean, all you really need is this good education, which we have, right? Food, mm-hmm. which is cheap when you buy it from the store, right? You're good to go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and if they mimic, if you're a good parent, they'll just copy what you're doing. And you have like tiny little uh, minions, you know, going around and doing recordings too with you, you know? Right. I like doing urban exploration. I look forward to having a backpack of my kid <laughs> behind me and just kind of <laughs> jumping across rooftops. Yeah. 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 Like Aladdin. Yeah. yeah that was good. <laughs> yeah that that's uh no yeah it's it's like um kids also you're able to not worry so much about what's going to happen in old age you know i mean there is for a lot of people with uh a lot of these programs it's supposed to be well you you have this program that's going to take care of you instead of instead of worrying about um kids and certainly you know it's a good idea to invest and be sure you're financially secure um yeah, I mean, but. every every animal out there, uh, I mean, that's one thing. I saw this, like, we're about to wrap up, but I saw this picture, I think, on, like, Instagram once where uh, a parent, mother, father in the middle is a kid. A kid has, like, one sock, and the other guy, and the other foot is wearing a shoe. And the like, thing is, like, don't judge your parents. Maybe that could have been, like, all they had to give you or something like that. And, like, that is such, like, a bullshit response to, like, you know, <laughs> criticizing your parents. Like, even animals, like, spend the time to get resources and build their nests, knowing that they're going to create uh, young, younglings, right? Right. Um, so, like, in the animal kingdom, they do that. Like, why can't you just prepare, you know, for the responsibility of bringing in a human being into this world? Um, and so I think it's uh, kind of bullshit. And in most, yeah. most respect for people kind of bring that. I think it, uh, it's not good when government incentivizes that especially single parenthood right um and welfare states i think that's that's horrible that's the worst thing you can do a child needs kind of both parents you know a child needs a kind of a grounding and that kind of um responsibility that both parents are going to have to each other in commitment and government does an incentivization of against that right that's that's the system as it is you know the, right. the government eventually becomes your parent and uh gets to dole out your allowance right <laughs> Uh, so with that, I think it was a good episode, good talk. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming on, John. Yes, sir. Yes. And we'll do uh, Kennedy Financials next. Yep. <laughs> for those listening in, stay liberated.